Molly tries interview. Is that my cue? <laughs> Is it a problem that I'm dressed like the chair? You ask me every time what I think we're going to do next, and the whole point of the show is I can't know what we're doing next. So again, I have no clue. If you want to give me a clue. Molly, what are we doing? I'm still outside in the hall, per usual. This time it's a little later in the day. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Shall we? Good morning, Molly. Good morning. Where's my blue box? Where's my present? I got a couple of nice plates of hotel food. Should I open up my first envelope? Yeah. Guess the price. 190 per pound, 30 per pound, 95 per pound. Oh ho. Based on visuals, I would say this is the most expensive. It's a little bit darker in color, which makes me think it might be further aged and therefore more expensive. It's really hard to tell, but I think this one might be 95 per pound and this one the 30 per pound. Should I eat them now? Pretty porky, funky, salty. It's pretty fatty in the mouth and it's definitely pork forward. I wish this were cut thinner. Oh, I really don't prefer that. It's kibbly. No, thank you. Much milder in flavor. Buttery. Let's flip them over. 95 per pound, okay. This is Fermin Hamon Iberico, characterized by juicier slices and intense flavors. B. I was right. Okay. The Fermin Jamon Bellota. Made from free range pigs that eat only acorns for the last four months of their lives. Nutty flavor. And then Jamon Serrano. Made from commercial breeds like the Duroc pig, cured for eight to 24 months. So this episode is uh, all about Jamon Iberico. Cool. Did you get a whole leg? Where's the leg? <laughs> per usual, I was given a bunch of presents. Wow! Lots of clues. And taken on a wacky scavenger hunt. Andiamo! To learn everything there is to know about... Jamon Iberico de Belota. I don't really eat it that much, mostly because it's so expensive and I can't afford it. I mean, it's $190 per pound. I'm ready for my next clue. A telescope? This is so silly. Spy your prize. I legit don't know how to use this. Oh my god. Is that Alex Delaney? <laughs> Wait. It looks like Alex Delaney. Hungry for more? Your tools await you on floor 24. <laughs> Andiamo. It's very vibey down here. Like good vibrations. Ooh, spooky. <gasps> My box. Yes. <laughs> Is there gonna be a live pig under here? <laughs> oh God, I was scared it was an animal. I thought there'd be like a little baby piglet under there. Oh, new knives, you guys. Okay, this looks like the classic Iberico knife. It has like these little indentations so that the ham releases from the blade. Chef's knife and a boning knife. Okay, let's cut this mother up. Oh, the envelope. I forgot about the envelope. I got so excited about the ham. Number three, learn about hamon. I'm guessing I need to go over here. This is a jankety table. I just won't touch it. Oh. It's important to Armando that his pigs get enough exercise. The pigs should eat belotas, acorns. That gives the ham its nutty flavor. So for something to be jamón ibérico de belota, it needs to be a certain breed, pata negra, be fed exclusively a diet of acorn, which is belota, and then it goes through this super long aging process. Three years drying out. 
the amount of time that this particular kind of ham will spend packed in salt, it seasons the meat, draws out moisture, and then preserves it so that it doesn't go bad. So it spends one week covered in salt, and then the salt gets brushed off and then goes to hang for a couple of months, and then it goes to that more moist, hot storage for three years. So from the time that the pig is slaughtered to the time that it's actually on the market and out in the world, it's, it's been maybe four years. Yeah, I mean, time is money. So it makes sense. I am ready to carve the ham. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Ham and toe. Come on. Nice baby. Yeah. I come back into the test kitchen and then there's Jauma. Hi, Hi, I'm Molly. Jauma and Estimillo. Sorry, what was it? Jauma. Jauma. Yeah, from Barcelona. You work at España. Yes. I'm the master carver over there. Master carver. Mm -hmm. How uh, do you become a master? Practicing. <laughs> the art to carve the whole ham all the way and get the most slices of the ham. How long have you been doing it? Like around 10 years now. He's trained under masters, and despite the fact that he spent 10 years pretty much exclusively slicing Iberico ham, he still thinks that there's room for growth. You never finish learning, so that's what's keeping me so going. So you still feel like you haven't totally mastered the art of slicing ham? No. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. It's like sushi rice. Yes. Are these different? Yes, this one is uh, Serrano. It's cured more or less for 14 months. This one goes for 190 a pound at the España. Slice by hand. Also increases the price when you have it hand sliced. Say I want the whole ham. Mm -hmm. Then how much would it cost? Like 1500 more or less. Wait, I feel like this is gonna get like kind of greasy, so I'm gonna put an apron on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, no, sorry, I'm just gonna go. get um, an apron nervous. on. I'm not nervous, you're nervous. I think you're nervous. You're a little you're tense. Really I'm just you're bringing the energy. Relax, I think you're a little nervous. Oh my you're God, nervous. get out of here. Let's screw it up. Okay, well, it depends. This costs $1,500 if you were to just walk into the shop and ask for the whole ham, but if it's hand sliced, which is what he does, he's yeah. a master hand slicer, it's $200 a pound. Don't f*** it up. I'm not gonna f*** it up. You have over there some knives. Then I would recommend you to put some glove, but the knife I like, no glove. No glove, okay. You can move it like this. That helps you to keep oh. the, the cut. Yeah. But this one, you can rotate it. Okay, so that's fine. So fun. first, you have different parts in the ham. Okay. Oh, sorry. You have here the hip, yeah. then you're gonna have here the bone, and here is gonna be the knee. So that's ankle, then this would be the hoof, and then this would be the knee? The knee. The biggest part of the meat is called maza, and la contramaza, and the punta. What does maza mean? Maza, it's, I don't know the translation, like a big piece of thumb, something. Every part of the ham has different flavors for the maza. You start from the top, you yeah. get to the bone. You yeah. flip it, you cut the whole thing, yeah. then you, you have like a profile of meat. You have to put it sideways, so you, you to continue slicing like this. When I go to a butcher shop or to a charcuterie spot and I ask for like a pound of prosciutto thinly sliced, I'm not specifying like, please can I have it from this specific region of that ham. These different zones that you are supposed to tackle in a specific order, that was super interesting for me. Makes sense? Yeah, totally. Okay, masa, contra masa. Punta. punta. So the punta is at the bottom when it's hanging, mm -hmm. when it's curing. It's juicy so and all salty. the juice falls down to that point. I think I might be here for the punta. I like around this part. What is that called? It's a cañete. It's a tougher meat, but the yeah. flavor it's very complex. What does cañete mean? Man, I wish I spoke <laughs> Cañete, but in Spanish I learned another Espanol. I don't know, it's a joint. Maybe. Yeah, this is a like tobillo. A so oh, tobillo. Ah, we call it canilla. It's canilla. the femur. <laughs> it's this part. Femur. Yes, yes. No, femur That's... is here. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, the pork has an extra piece of leg. Oh, whatever. Uh, it's not uh, caniete. Caniete, there you go. Oh, man, she greasy. Perfect. From this bone, you get like two fingers like this. Two fingers below this. Got it. Yeah. And we're going to make an incision just to open it up. And then with a chef knife, you go until you feel the bone. Okay. And you go around. I am at the bone. Look at all that fat. Yeah. It's just leaking out fat. So now you flip it on this side. Now around the hip, you can use the tip to go around like this. This is such a weird way to hold a knife. 
I mean, I just don't normally hold a chef's knife like this. I mean, I use a knife all day, every day. He like almost would jab into it and sort of like carve around whatever bone he hit to release the meat from the bone. You see, we have this cut, we have this cut. We're gonna clean all this nasty stuff that we have on top of the ham. Okay. We're gonna clean the whole thing. Understood. That's gonna take a while. No. So the first thing you have to do before you carve into the ham is cut off all of the rancid fat because anything that's been exposed to the air in the drying or curing room has gone rancid. All this yellow thing, you don't wanna eat it. We're just taking out the yellow part for now. Just the yellow part. Do you still like to eat ham on Jamon. Iberico? I love it. You know, you're looking for the next ham that's gonna tell you something else. Same like humans, we all have different bodies. Exactly. So you're looking for the hip bone. You have to kind of look like this and go in. So again. you wanna go right like in here? Yeah. Not too deep, not too deep. Uh oh. I went like one inch. A little deep, bit, yeah. A little, a little deep. bit too deep, but yeah. not too deep. This bone. It's, it's like a curve. Like that? Yeah, perfect. Oh, here I you see, go. I feel it. Yep. All right, and then I go in here. Yeah, be careful with the other hand. Oh, nice. And okay. we have to go around the other part of the hip. You see the bone here? The hardest part for me was not really being able to visualize the anatomy of the leg. See like this? For Jaume, he can sense it. He's like, in a half a centimeter, we're gonna hit this bone. Follow, follow, <laughs> the, follow the hip. But I was like, I don't know exactly how deep this part of the bone goes. You got a nice clean cut. How deep should I carve around it? That's the kind of thing that just takes like years and years of experience. What are you guys doing? Cleaning it up? We're cleaning the shit out of these cleaning the shit hams. Out of I mean. What are you uh, removing? All of the nasty outside rancid it's, skin. Oh, rancid it's skin. It's rancid. Rancid. Mad rancid. And then we're exposing the meat below. Yeah. Exposing the, the gem of the inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, $200 a pound. $200 a pound? A pound. Call me when you start slicing. I'm gonna slice you up some ham for sure. It's gonna take me a minute. Now when you have it here, you yeah. need to make like thin slices like this. Okay. That then you can cover the ham like this at the end of the day when you're done. We carved off a shit ton of fat, put it aside, which was kind of gnarly and saved it. You wanna take that fat and place it back over the ham to continue to preserve it so that another layer doesn't become rancid. You can have like a slice of this fat and eat it. Yeah. Prove it, bro. Just a little like bit. That? Like this is perfect. Pure fat. You smell it. And you leave it in your mouth. Do you let it melt? Mm-hmm. Mm. Like butter. Mm. That's pretty tight. So. Oh, you got a card for me? Yeah. <laughs> in your pocket? You Number four, cut the ham. Yeah. Like cut the cheese. Is this the mata right here? The mata, exactly. Mata. So this big part, big part of the ham. Is the mata. You need to slice it small. Why? Put enough to put it in your mouth and enjoy the section of that ham. All the parts taste different. Exactly. You, you need to give the customer the whole experience. The ham. Okay. Oh, he's got the big dog kit over here. Exactly. It's a lot of years. This is the older one that he's been using for how long? For two, two years. Two years, and look at how mm -hmm. much of the knife has like chiseled down. And yep. this is the new one. Someone ate a lot of knife. Well, basically when you <laughs> sharpen it, you have... Oh, when you sharpen it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to keep the knife flat. Just as lies when the knife is coming to you. Normally you need to see the... The knife through the it. The knife. So it's translucent. The, exactly. And not bigger than this. Okay. Yeah, we, we can say it's kind of learning to drive with a sports car. What do you think about this one? That looks delish. Eat it. Would you, it. Better? Would you pay $200 a pound for that? <laughs> no. Oh! Neither would I. Soft, easy, no, nobody rushing. It's like the top of its bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let the ham sense your fear. Exactly. You, you see the, these marks? Like yeah, here? yeah, I do not like the, that. This happens because you, you are slicing both ways. Okay. I recommend you slice it and stop. I see. Like you don't and keep stop. going, exactly. you like pull it up and then... You control the, the whole slice. Uh, relax. I know, I'm like really tensing up. 
You really have to relax. Yes. I feel like that was Here a really go. good one. Yep. That was, that was pretty pro. Mm -hmm. Not master level, but pretty pro. Very close. That's much, looking much better. better. Mm -hmm. This and guy, you know, whoa! <laughs> and you, can, you can see the knife. Let me know what you think. She's gonna stand here and just hand me slices. Thank you. My pleasure. Oh, it's getting better. Is it? As you get a little deeper. You're like drunk off Iberico. I like when it's like speckled and has one line. I don't want like 50 50. That wise. But it's, it's gotta be thin. It's not thin throat. Hi. <laughs> All my friends! It's delicious. How's it cute dress. Thank you. Oh, wow. Ooh, that was a nice slice, Mal. Thanks. That's a lot. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so we're doing a little cocktail tasting later, and we figured there's a lot of ham sitting right here, so maybe we could slice them up for the for the little appetizer I spread. I love it! Yes, I'll we'll make, make a, a spiral. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yay! Okay, bye. <laughs> Wait, I'm That'll gonna... work out. We're doing it like 4.30. Okay, I better hurry up. So when you start getting the hip bone, you have to go around. Yeah. Don't go too deep. So always the knife getting to the bone. Don't go like this. Okay, because you don't want to make an incision Here, into the flesh. Here, you can cut it straight and take it out like this. Oh, so that they're even. Exactly, you have a straight line. Then you have this part, you have to cut it like a little by like little. Uh, backhanded. Every time you see a bone, if you do it properly, you're doing the slices and the bone is clean, totally. Yeah. According to Jaume, a great ham slicer will get the maximum amount of yield out of a very expensive product. I think you're going to have to do some plating. It's about not having to waste any of the precious ham. You yeah. have the skills there. The only thing is just to focus on the task. That looks like a perfect slice. Exactly. This is, will be like two straight lines. It's very flat. It's almost done by machine. Keep her out away from this. I mean, that's beautiful. And it holds. Look at that beauty. When you plate it together, all these lines, they get together. So then it's like concentric circles. That's cool. But also we have the contramaza. We're gonna slide from here to here. Okay. Look for the kneecap, just mark it where it's at. Start like this. It's very different looking. Exactly. It's not as striated. It's more lean. It's definitely more You lean. don't have marble in here. Yeah. Right My turn? Yeah. The way the <clears throat> knife moves through it is really different. More friction in this part. And now, you see, we're getting too deep here, but not here. What you don't want is to carve away at the same place over and over again, and then be left with like a large notch in the ham that then wastes a huge amount of meat on either side because none of those big stacks can turn into slices. So basically the way that Jauma taught me to do it was to cut a slice and then start a quarter of an inch higher or further up the leg on the second slice constantly shaving away. And little by little, you're fixing it. That is a really hard thing to bear in mind, keeping that super level plane. And I don't think I've mastered that. And I probably never will, <laughs> but it still tasted good. Thank you so much. You're very well welcome. For teaching me everything. <laughs> Awesome. And I'm just going to keep it loose and relaxed. <laughs> exactly. And... Chill out and everything is going to be good, so don't worry about it. Oh. And the most important is to enjoy and that's it. That's the whole point. Okay, will do. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over. Okay. Practice time. Make a full plate of ham. Do I have a time limit? You have 20 minutes. Okay, let's just keep in mind that that man has been honing his craft for 10 years. I just want everyone to be aware of that. He's been honing his knife too. Yeah, he has. <laughs> it's a spiral where all of the fat and the flesh lines up so that it makes like a snail. So that's about 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 9, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'd say it's about 60 slices in 20 minutes, so that's too many. <laughs> so I want to be cutting parallel to the femur bone. Can I have a piece of ham? <laughs> Ooh. Fuck. Morocco, it's feet. really that's thick. Not... No, that's all right. I can't be bothered. No one talked to me for 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna try and make even rectangular slices like this guy. And then, yeah, I'm staying zen, so don't talk to me. 
I noticed he was doing a little more like wiggle waggling. <gasps> this is a great one. Hello? If someone gave you a slice of ham that looked like this, would you know that it wasn't cut by a master? Be real. I mean, maybe holding it up in the air like that, I can see it's a little shreddy on the end. But if it was on a plate, no, I wouldn't know. Oops. That's what's up. You kind of have to just let the knife do the work. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> very good. It's very precise work. The more that I repeated the motion over and over again, the more consistent all of the pieces were. You sort of get into this like zen flow where you're just carving and carving and there's a certain amount of satisfaction that you get out of the consistency, but also I respect the ham. I want to. Where's Rappo? I'd like Rappo to come down here and see how I'm like actually just mastering this. Oh, I hit a bone. Okay, you have to follow the curve of the bone and then you backhand it. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I'm feeling way more confident. I can get the ham. <laughs> Ciao, mate. It's Molly. Check out my ham spiral. Please rate it on a scale of one to ten. Be honest. Okay, it's been sent. Andy, are you impressed with my plating skills, Mr. Plater? So fatty. I always like kind of rub it on my lips before what, I eat it. What That's do you mean you oh when you eat it? The fat because it's like it's like almost. It's like, like lip balm. It's like a lip. Oh, I was gonna say a lubricant, but sure, yeah, like yeah, oh, like a lip balm. You would yeah, say exactly. lubricant. Oh, you're so snooty. Like like... Right? Oh my god. It's Imagine so if glossy. you did that and then kiss the hubby. <laughs> or a tuna. Oh. A tuna would make tuna it very good. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a task for you. Okay, cool. Oh, look, it's number six. Make the world's most expensive ham sandwich. I'm also gonna judge it. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, go to town. Transport me to Spain. What the f is in there? I don't know what the f is in there. What if I just popped it out of the cooler? Oh my god, how cute would that be? A little Andy popping out of the cooler. Wow. I got presents from Despana. Look at this big block of manchego. Green olives, tomatoes, olive oil. Olive oil. Is this the bread I should build my sandwich on? I think you just do what you gotta do. You have an hour to make a sandwich. That's ridiculous. It's way too much time for you to make a sandwich. Should I put truffles on it? No. I would say less is more with this That's sandwich. what I think too. Maybe a little olive oil, good bread. Maybe a little garlic or Maybe too much. ditch the bread. Then it's Maybe gonna ditch the olive oil. Maybe just eat the ham. I might go open-faced. I mean, you don't want that much bread. I really wanted the ham to shine. I didn't want to make a hoagie. I wasn't comfortable with the idea of just smashing a bunch of bread together with this beautiful product. Do you know what I want to do, kind of? Like a mashup of pan con tomate and like griddle the bread, <laughs> rub it in garlic and tomato, this tomato is like gonna float this. And then tons of ham. I'm here for the fat. And maybe like a few shards of manchego. That'd be good. Mmm. I love the grilled bread. I actually wanna see if it would benefit from a little of the like fruitiness of this olive oil. It doesn't need fat, certainly, but there's also so much bread there that it can handle it. It felt right what I just did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a plan. <gasps> Maybe I can task Alex Delaney with making me a perfect Spanish cocktail to go with it. Delaney! He's the drinks man. What's going on? Here's the plan. I think that in order to eat the world's most expensive, greatest ham sandwich, yeah. it needs to be paired with beverage. The perfect complement to my perfect sandwich. When does sandwich, this have to be ready? 4.30. You got it's literally when I have to go bring everything upstairs. Yeah, great. This is so fun. I can't wait to see what he comes up with. Should we get some like Spanish tunes going? Cue the Spanish tunes. 
I gotta keep my eye on the prize. Seven minutes out. Perfect. You're gonna love it. Going ham. I'm hamming it up. I wanna have a party. I'm trying to party. That looks gorgeous. Thank you. Did anybody hear that? Never to be repeated. Look it. He's even gonna Instagram it. Get Instagram. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's undeniably gorgeous. What more validation do you need? Um, Jaume, pretty much. He's my boy. So what I landed on is a version of pan con tomate. I want to give it a little bit of height because it's like open faced. There's nothing like oh, I'm not putting anything. Oh, sorry, it's open faced. Oh. Okay. Uh, sorry, I mean, no, no, I just I mean, don't think I'm that this dead. ham wants two fat slices of baguette. Like, that's not what it's about. There's such a crowd around me right now. Yeah. It's a spectacular moment. I feel like I need to get a good photo of this before you guys... Hell yeah. Do it. Oh, a sunny moment. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Okay, I present to you the world's maybe not most expensive, but most beautiful and delicious ham sandwich made with you and mine, Andy. Okay. I have to say, I do like the smoky element from the grilled bread. Uh-huh. I like almost the inconsistency of your slices, which sounds shady. Some are a little bit more thin, some are a little bit more thick, but I like that, how each bite is slightly different. Why do you think I didn't do that on purpose? Maybe it did. Maybe I did. This is crazy, but I feel like it needs flaky salt. Do you agree? It does. <laughs> I do because there's so much fat, it needs a no, touch of no, salt. No, no. It's a really sexy sandwich. Right? That's why I made it for you like this. Because I feel like you appreciate sexy food. Yeah. The Herberica should be at the forefront and the star. And in this you case, it is. <laughs> okay, number seven. Share your work. Well, that's easy, because I made enough for everyone. Hey, Molly. Where's my cocktail? All right, here's the first step. Take one sip out of this. All right, look. Mmm, that tastes delicious. Ounce of lemon juice. Is this Spanish? Ounce of Aperol. <laughs> it's not, but it's to me it feels the, the ultimate European-American crossover. This is ultimately refreshing, a little bit bitter, a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. It's what you want sitting out in a plaza <laughs> in Barcelona. Barcelona. Eating your ham sandwich. Okay, and tell them what you call this. I didn't invent this. Oh, I know. It's a place in Baltimore called Wet City, but it's, but it's called Spaghetti. 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 Delaney coming in with his somewhat trashy spaghetti is a perfect example of what I mean when I say I like fancy foods in unfancy environments. Perfect for Humble my ham sandwich. It took us, what, 15 seconds to make it? Let me cut you a slice. Yeah, give me a little slice. I'm not trying to eat Iberico ham anywhere other than in the test kitchen with my friends drinking some trashy beer. I think it's delightful. Thank you. I wouldn't mind the ham if it was just a little thinner. Oh, God. Mm. And then if you want, I think they pair really well with these olives. So. Really good. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my God. It's delicioso. Okay, going to 26. Okay, well, this is quite a party, guys. Woo! What are you not guys really doing? Yet. We're not ready yet. Okay, when are we ready? Well, maybe we'll let you know, Molly. I just made a signature snack here with a real signature with hand sliced hamon iberico for you. I already tried it. I know. <laughs> I just got a text from Jaume. Wow. Very good for first timer. I would give a six plus. <laughs> I wish I did something that nice first day. Good consistency. Another trick for plating, make sure you show the nice part of the slice. I guess I didn't show the nice part. And then, thank you so much. It was a treat for me. And then a few minutes later, four minutes later, distance should be more even. <laughs> I guess I feel good about the strides that I made over the course of the day because I've only been doing this for six hours. I'm coated in a layer of like pork fat grease right now which is kind of gnarly but also kind of awesome. I think my overall takeaway even when building the sandwich was that it's kind of the best eaten on its own. Like I feel like you enjoy all elements of it and the subtleties of the flavor. The different parts having different flavors and different ratios of fat to me, and you don't really get to experience that when it's paired with other things. So I understand why it's so highly coveted as something that you just eat by the small bite-sized slice. And now I'm gonna go have a fat cocktail. <laughs> so that's it. Wrap.
Well, Adam was like giving me a really fucking hard time about this hand, so. I just want him to know that I'm not a hack. I'll put this in Rappa's office. We'll see what he says later. <laughs> I think he's gonna love it.